So I came to announce that Grand Blue Fantasy Relink will be also coming to PC along with a new teaser trailer which was shown at Grand Blue Fantasy Fest. The trailer features improved visual fidelity which the director Tetsuya Fukuhara also mentioned. It shows off some of the combat gameplay and a look at characters during their downtime. The developer also revealed that you can play the game in easy, normal and hard modes. New details about the main story revealed concentrating on a narrative-driven single-player adventure happening in Sega Grande Skydom. Quests will have both single-player and multiplayer with up to four-player co-op online. You'll need to progress through the main story in order to unlock multiplayer content. You can also use CPU-controlled allies to complete quests or tackle them solo. Previously, Side Games has announced that the title will be coming to PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 sometime in 2022, but now have confirmed that PC will be a platform as well. Grand Blue Fantasy Relink will be releasing sometime in 2022 for PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, and PC. Ubisoft unveiled two major upcoming releases coming to Assassin's Creed Valhalla, including a new DLC, Dawn of Ragnarok, and two crossover stories coming to Valhalla, as well as Odyssey. Eivor will take up the mantle as Odin, the Allfather and Norse God of Wisdom in this newest expansion. Dawn of Ragnarok's story focuses on Odin's story to rescue his son, Baldur. He will need to travel through the dwarven realm of Svalrathheim and become an ally to the dwarves. Players will be able to wield magical powers that they can gain from defeating enemies. In line with the teaser tweet, Odin will be able to make use of both fire and frost themed abilities. The Dawn of Ragnarok DLC for Assassin's Creed Valhalla is scheduled to release on March 10th. It will cost $39.99 USD and will be available for Xbox One and Xbox Series X and S, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, PC via the Ubisoft Store and Epic Games Store, as well as Stadia. The second piece of content announced was Assassin's Creed crossover stories, both of which are available now. This is the first ever crossover DLC in the history of the Assassin's Creed franchise. In Those Who Are Treasured, it will send Cassandra to Corfu Island in Assassin's Creed Odyssey. While in A Fated Encounter, you will also be sent to Corfu Island and unlock rewards based on Odyssey's motif coming to Assassin's Creed Valhalla. A new update patch 1.4.1 adds difficulty settings that can let players tweak the parrying time windows and brush with death related durations and more. A bunch of new details were released for Stranger of Paradise Final Fantasy Origin. The publisher has been giving the public a constant drift of tidbits and news ever since October of this year, but this time they have revealed new characters we can meet, the basic jobs we might use, and areas that we shall be able to explore. In the job system, players will be able to customize Jack and his party by assigning them different jobs or combat roles, and with any RPG, there will be a large range of classes to choose from. It seems that currently you will need to assign your party members with a job, but Jack himself can change his job on the fly in combat. Jobs include sword fighter, swordsman, ronin, mage, duelist, lancer, dragoon, and more. There are a total of three new characters announced in the Stranger of Paradise December update. A friend, a foe, and one we cannot truly be sure about. Sophia is a fellow warrior who joins Jack, Astos, the king of the Dark Elves, and Tiamat, a multi-headed beast also known as the Fiend of the Wind. Locations were previewed including the Crystal Mirage, the Flying Fortress, and the Western Keep. As with all news in this video, you can check out more details on FactualLife.com. Undecember, a Korean action RPG that looks to be a mix of Diablo and Olsen had a gameplay and trailer announcement earlier this week. Needs Games, based in South Korea, released a slew of new trailers and information. The footage included cinematic trailers, an interview with the game director, and of course, some gameplay. The team also featured an interview with game director In Young Ku, who is proudly describing the thought process about how the game was developed. The company promises that the key concentration for the game is fun. Many closed beta tests have been conducted and they seem to be eager to take player feedback to heart. Undercebber will be available for both PC and mobile platforms. There was also news about runes which is the skill system in Undercember. Players will have access to what is being called the rune cast, a container to hold all your skills and the respective modifiers. Once a skill rune is slotted into the rune cast, that skill will be immediately available for use. Link runes can be attached to skill runes if the colour matches an open slot, opening up a number of ways to customise skills. Needs Games claims that gear in Undecember will hold unlimited potential, meaning players will be able to enchant gear to fully customise and max out their desired stats. General farming will not go to waste as unneeded items can be salvaged and broken down into base materials. 
Aside from the usual dungeon crawling and loot grinding, Undecember has a few unique systems. The Chaos Dungeon will be an endgame area wherein you can customize the challenge with Chaos cards. The difficulty and rewards both scale depending on which cards you take with you. Undecember will be out on PC via Steam and mobile on January 13th, 2022 in Korea. Global pre-registration has started already as of December 13th, 2021. Also this week, we got a closer look at Strayblade which has gotten a brand new trailer focusing on melee combat and various weapons players will be able to use. It goes over the game's combat mechanics including the 8-dimensional dodging system allowing for fluid movement. There also looks to be some sort of final boss area as the trailer shows demigods which will probably possess more challenging moves to maneuver. Stray Blade is an action RPG where as a rogue adventurer you will explore the valley of a career with your companion, the Xenon Wolf Boji, unraveling the story of the Forgotten Valley. Master the powers of the three Ikrean metals to once again restore balance to the war-torn world. Strayblade is launching on PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X and S, PC via the Epic Games Store and Steam in 2022. Diablo 2 got major news for the first patch to add balance changes to classes for the first time in 11 years. Blizzard Entertainment dropped a huge blog entry on December 15th that detailed a lot of changes that will be coming to Diablo 2 Resurrected. Surprisingly, it contains teasers for a host of balancing updates for many aspects of the game. Blizzard intends to focus on expanding the class build diversity in this new patch. What's even more interesting is that it seems there will be no nerfs done to any of the popular skills. Instead, all the underappreciated skills will be receiving buffs or usability tweaks. The design philosophy here is that they want to empower you to be creative in building your character but not going too far off from each class theme. While Blizzard did not give any specific numbers, they did outline their thought process for each of the seven classes. There was also news about new rune words which will be available as well in Diablo 2 Resurrected's first ladder season. As with Diablo 2 and Diablo 3 before it, Diablo 2 Resurrected will finally get a ladder system. It will be broken into four different modes, Standard, Hardcore, Standard Expansion and Hardcore Expansion Ladder. Square Enix has announced measures to tackle the unusually long ongoing login queues for Final Fantasy XIV's growing player base with temporarily halting sales of the game and pausing free trial availability. Final Fantasy XIV is suffering from a rather strange problem at the moment. It's the fact that it's too popular. The queues in fact are so long that many are waiting a few hours just to get in the game during peak times and on high population servers. However, in a recent post by the developer, they are putting into action a number of strategies in place in order to handle the influx of new players. This includes current halting of sales of the game itself. Square Enix has also announced that no new free trial accounts will be available to sign up either until they get a handle on the situation. They are prioritizing paid owners of the game and those who have a current subscription in place. The developer has shared that the problem with the solution is ongoing as they need new server upgrades hardware that has been difficult to obtain during this time due to COVID-19 which has caused shortages. The team are considering adding new servers to each region. Also, the suspension of ads for the game is also going to go into effect as they cannot advertise a game that no new players can buy. The sales of the Endwalker expansion for current players plus upgrades will still be available. Previously, they had issued current subs a free week of game time. However, now they're giving players two weeks on top of the original seven days of extra game time to appease players for the long wait in login queues. If you are planning to play at all this week, I would highly recommend logging in during non-peak times if you can as the queues are almost non-existent then. There's also been an update that they will provide an update between the 20th and the 21st of December, so there's going to be some maintenance happening then as well. The team at Sabotage Studios celebrated the Nintendo Indie World by showcasing new video footage of their game, Sea of Stars. This RPG is highly reminiscent of older games and should provide a good nostalgia trip for those who grew up with this art style. The combat system in Sea of Stars won't be like the usual turn-based games. Instead of simply selecting an attack or a magical spell to use from the menu, hitting an action button at the same time as your character's animation will actually increase the damage done. Aside from timing attacks, you can also perform combo attacks with multiple characters from your party. While Sea of Stars may look like the olden RPGs, it will not feel like one. The exploration system should help with that as players will be able to travel from the map in a variety of ways, either running, swimming, climbing or jumping through the terrain and obstacles. Sea of Stars will be released in the holiday season of 2022, but no specific date has been given. It will be available on Steam and Nintendo Switch. Well, that's it for the week in the wikis. Please join us again next week for yet another great week of gaming. Remember to check out our VIP program for some exclusive supporter benefits. 
and budding writers should take advantage of our Become an Author initiative. Thanks again for being part of this great community. Keep checking in with us with news, reviews, YouTube streams and vids and general wiki goodness. 